We are here, and I am Coffee Kevin, and I am back from vacation. And you know how you walk in in the morning and you go, well, I could use another day of vacation. I, uh, I actually had a nice long vacation. I didn't take one last year, and um, a couple of years in a row I've, I didn't uh, have vacation. Uh, partly due to the scheduling of coffee con. I mean, I know <laughs> I'm sure some people think I'm always on vacation uh, doing that, but it's a little more than that. Um, and um, anyway, so what, what did I do on vacation? I didn't, uh, w with coffee, I had, um, well, I was up in Sturgeon Bay, and there's a place called Kick Coffee up there, and they've got fabulous coffee, inclu including Collectivo coffee. They don't roast. In my opinion, a lot of um, a lot of cafes are smarter not to roast because roasting is a completely different business. It doesn't mean they shouldn't roast if they if they want to roast. Some people love to roast, and that's great. But you know, there's something to be said for someone who has a good relationship with a good roaster that's constantly roasting and giving sending them beans. It's more centralized that way. They're not operating a noisy roaster in their shop. Not that that's a bad thing, you know, depending upon uh, how your shop's designed. But it's uh, they don't have a space uh, to do it, and uh, they, they concentrate on the brewing. And brewing, as anyone who hangs out with me knows, brewing is just as important as roasting. In fact, uh, well, no, it's just as important. It's not, that's the thing about coffee. Not, you know, the growing coffee isn't the only thing that's important. Roasting coffee isn't the only thing that's important. And brewing coffee isn't the only thing that's important. It's typical that people who specialize in one area or another think that what they do is the most important part. They're, but they're all critical. And uh, that's what, uh, uh, and that brings me to, uh, uh, to uh, Coffee Con. And uh, our uh, we wrapped up our uh, we wrapped up our uh, fundraising, and of course it was our first fundraising. And I think back the first time I got on a bicycle and I crashed uh, within seconds. So it uh, doesn't. Uh, uh, I think anything uh, worth doing is worth doing uh, well, and is uh, and uh, is worth um, learning and. So it's not going to be the last time we do something like this. So I'm not, I'm far from discouraged. However, uh, given that you can look at the site and see that we took in $100, I appreciate anyone who donated. Um, clearly people don't know about the event, which is one of the reasons that we um, only have 3,500 in LA instead of 5,000 or 10,000 people uh, there. Um, now 3,500 is a good number in LA, but we also, um, have learned a lot about uh, what we'd want to do. The industry is still not committed to supporting us, and I have some phone calls with people later this week uh, that say they are interested. So let's um, cross our fingers about that. But uh, you know, the thing with the um, businesses, I thought it would be the uh, coffee brewing equipment manufacturers who would be the most aware, because they've got to be aware that they don't get. Um, they don't get the uh, no respect, you know. They don't get the respect that they uh, deserve from, uh, particularly within the industry, from the roast community, in my opinion, uh, because um, it is natural for roasters to want to envision themselves as winemakers, and they're not winemakers. Winemakers are done. They give you a bottle, and you're done. You've got all you need is a clean glass, and they've. Everything that Kendall and Jackson or whoever it is that made your wine did is finished. All you need to do is, at the most, chill it properly. At the most, open it up and let it breathe a little bit, something like that. It's a little factor in it. Uh, it may make some difference in the product quality. Nothing like brewing makes. And that's one reason we emphasize brewing here and at CoffeeCon. And uh, that's what's unique about CoffeeCon. No other event that y you or I can go to is going to give us that kind of attention. Uh, the uh, other shows, which are trade shows, the other shows that are consumer shows are mostly uh, focused on tasting. We do tasting, too, but we split it. It's just as important for us to brew. And I, at some point, 
I'm not done, but I'm going to uh, convince people of that. I, the, but again, I thought the brewer manufacturers would support us. Uh, so far, uh, a lot of the brewer manufacturers don't. I've got one brewer manufacturer that's absolutely convinced that Cook's Magazine, who, by the way, wrote their article after I reviewed the, the, their brewer uh, in the 90s, uh, is why they're successful today. Um, that uh, hurts a little bit. I think that's inaccurate, but anyway, that's what they think. They don't think uh, coming and, and being in front of uh, consumers is really the important, most important part. At least that's what I was told when the uh, U.S. Uh, manager uh, got uh, excitable last year and uh, wanted to uh, slow down uh, being involved. Uh, but let's see. Maybe they'll be, uh, I hope they'll be back. Uh, there are a lot of uh, good brewers out there, and the brewer makes a huge difference. Uh, the brewer is the final chance, and you are the person operating the brewer, and 80% of the coffee is brewed at home, so you are the majority. Coffee, even the good stuff, especially the good stuff, I would say. Um, it, by that, I mean the, uh, the more expensive beans. This brewing method is one of my favorites. I'm just switching the subject. Uh, this brewing method is one of my favorites. Uh, and uh, let's see how we can make this coffee. Now, I hope that I, this has been going for a while. Sometimes I think Michael takes more time just to test me on this because, yeah, I can tell this may overflow. It didn't. Okay, good. Uh, okay. I have got 600 grams. Hey, hey, hold on a second. That's not going to work. My mother were here. She would say, get that out of the way of your face. Okay. The, um, we are going to, there we go. We're going to, uh, I always wait for a little of the, uh, the water to come up. And I don't, the danger of waiting until the coffee's fully boiling in there is you put that in there. Sometimes you can get a splattering and I don't like taking chances. All right. Um, and then just, you know, wait for it to go kind of halfway up and then you can put it in there. Uh, I have got to, uh, time this, and I've got to get a timer up on my phone, and, okay, and I'm gonna, uh, stopwatch, that's what I want. Okay, and then I'm going to, now it's, now's the time. Start this, put the coffee in, and right away, I'm going to stir. Oops, sorry, I just hit the microphone. That's the type of thing. Let's hope Fat Pat doesn't fire me for that. Okay, here we go. And I had someone lecture me that, oh, you don't want to stir too much. You know, you do want all the grounds to be wet. Otherwise, and can you see that overhead? Can, where's the overhead shot that we've been... Do you have it? Oh, the thing needs to be moved over? Okay. No, I, I understand you can't move that. I, I, I understand that. I will move it. That's not your fault. No. He's got to wait for it to settle down because it's been shaking. Look at this. Look at this uh, camera. Okay, it's, uh, it's been a minute now. So I need, uh, there we go, and I'm going to stir it. And I'm going to stir it just enough. You can't really see the side shot. But uh, you can see so there are some, always some grounds that clump together. And I stir it very little. Then I let it go another 30 seconds, 15, 30, 30 seconds, between 15 and 30 seconds. Okay, there's 20 seconds. We're going to shut this off. And we're going to, I'm going to stir again a third time. And I'm going to just stir a little bit, just enough. So that all the grounds are wet and completely broken up because they tend to clump together. And that is, I'm looking over it, there we are. And I'm going to now remove it. And I'm going to remove this. I, I, normally I would... Alright, and now you can get your overhead shot, Michael. This is a, oh, look at that. And this is a Sumatra uh, coffee from Colectivo. 
Uh, and actually, I stopped at Colectivo in downtown Milwaukee and got this. This was roasted on Thursday, I think. Maybe Friday. There we go. And hopefully, if I stirred it right, you get a little bit of a roundedness on it. On the uh, There you go. See, it's a, just a little bit of uh, this kind of a concave or uh, am I wrong to say convex? I can't remember. All right, uh, this is um, what we get, and that is now um, three minutes right on the button, and that's about right for a siphon. Uh, from the beginning of the grounds, for the, the grounds being in contact with the water, it should be three minutes. I mean, there are uh, different philosophies about this. One thing I really like about the siphon is there are uh, many, many, many uh, views on what is the only exact way to do it. And uh, Okay, here's our uh, Sumatra coffee. It doesn't, Highlands Organic Fair Trade, that's not a whole lot of information about it, and that's just fine. It says it's heavy-bodied. Everyone says that about Sumatras. Uh, between light and roast, uh, right, light and dark, it's, uh, they're claiming halfway. And then uh, the acidity um, between smooth and bright is closer to smooth, low acid. Um, low acidity, not low acid. They're different. Uh, it's not a pH thing so much. It's, um, I would, I guess I would call it a perception of pH. Low acidity is lower brightness. It's kind of like a tube sound. <laughs> it's, uh, not really that, uh, any less bright than, uh, solid state, but it, it, it sounds like it is. And that's, uh, that's the way coffees are uh, when they're uh, Sumatra, big-bodied Sumatran coffees. Um, this is a real nice coffee. I, I think, uh, by the way, I want to compliment Colectivo. Uh, they really have a, uh, a great um, roasting ability. They've really got it down. Uh, and and they, uh, we had their... Uh, uh, one of their buyers uh, who really gets all these coffees in uh, on last year. Uh, maybe we'll have him back again. Uh, it was a really fun visit. And we actually did it live from one of their cafes, uh, one of their Chicago cafes. Okay, this is, this is the only reason I use this top. I never use it any other time, but I, I use it as a stand. Uh, it's very useful for that. And then... Careful, uh, I'm talking to myself. Even though I turn that off, it needs to cool the uh, infrared. And then I'm gonna pour a cup for Michael, and I'm gonna pour a cup who hasn't had good coffee for a week. And uh, I'm gonna pour um, this um, one for me, and then I've got one in here for Pat if she's around. And uh, the coffee that we have here uh, says it's fair trade. Uh, I don't. I don't really mind that they don't give a lot of information. I know that every time what, what they see features baking spices, dried fruit, and sweet herbs. Well, that sounds believable. Let's see. That is really a. Um, it is really a uh, hot cup of coffee. I would say that coffee right now is about 160 degrees. Uh, that's 10 degrees hotter than I want to drink um, coffee. So uh, one way to cool it is to put cream in it. I know that that probably offends a lot of uh, the uh, um third wave people. Uh, however, uh, I was in a coffee, a uh, number of coffee shops um, during my vacation, and I was amazed at how many people um, who were in third wave coffee shops are using cream, and that's just fine with me. I don't, I don't have the litmus test. I say, um, once you paid for it, it's your coffee. You should have it any way you want. 
Um, I admit that I don't put uh, flavors in very often into my coffee, uh, if at all. And um, But, you know, once in a while I sweeten it. Once in a while I put cream in it. Uh, I enjoy it always. So, what can I tell you about this method? This method is great if, A, you want a really a hot cup of coffee. If you want a, make sure you're getting your money's worth. Look at these, look at these uh, grounds. In fact, uh, you can use your overhead shot for this, Michael. Uh, one last time. There you go. Uh, look at that. Look at how, uh, I'm going to bring it right up here into the camera, and you can see how, look at that, how, how dry. It just really, the va word vacuum, it sucks the coffee right out of the grounds bed. And that is just a delightful um, look at that. Okay, and then, um, so it's good for that. All the grounds get wet. Uh, if you stir it uh, three times uh, very gently, I don't see a problem with that. After all, uh, need I remind anyone, there is a constant agitation going on in the, uh, in the siphon method. It is not a uh, just to soak like a French press is without stirring. Um, there's always something going on, some bubbling going on, and that's there's there's definitely uh, what uh, Bond refers to as turbulence. So I would uh, not worry too much about that. Um, it's always nice to have a stir like this, a little paddle, uh, just like the uh, you could use an AeroPress paddle with this too. I did not take this on vacation. However, I did visit my friend Bob Henneken, and he has one of these, of course. And he has, he also has a bun trifecta, so I had uh, the enjoyment of uh, the pleasure of uh, having coffee with him a couple of times. And, of course, when I was at the uh, uh, cafe, uh, I got either a, a pour-over or I had, um, I think they use a... Uh, some sort of bottle, what's called bottle brewer, whether it's bun or uh, fetco, not sure, but it was uh, delicious. Uh, and by the way, when uh, my uh, way to game myself in cafes, when they're super busy, I do not usually order a uh, uh, a hand pour uh, because, especially if it's a cafe that has someone who's, that isn't the case at this one, uh, but if it's someone that's making a variety, either other drinks at the same time, or uh, worst case is ringing up the cash register at the same time. And I realize because of uh, labor, you know, that, that happens. That's a bad time to get yourself a hand pour. Uh, in my opinion, you're usually better off with the one that's uh, brewed by the machine. Uh, Fetco machines and bun machines are very capable of uh, making excellent coffee. And usually that's the one that someone has really given a lot of thought to, uh, how, to uh, how it should be brewed and uh, with that particular coffee. So uh, all the weights and everything are pretty... Uh, much figured out. So I don't think it's a big risk uh, to have coffee that way. Now, you know, we're not talking about uh, um, mainstream coffee places uh, or places you would get coffee like a McDonald's or someplace like that. I didn't have any McDonald's coffee on the road. Um, generally, I, I don't. But, um, you know, I, I would say uh, in a pinch, I've had it and sometimes it's, uh, it's good. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts is uh, more often even good, uh, and um, but you know when I when I can I like uh, coffee like this. Now I have a, a back to coffee count for a second. I have a couple of um, people I've reached out to uh, that uh, I would really like to is for one thing, I want to book uh, a venue, uh, pretty soon, especially in LA because LA would be February if we do it. And I need, uh, cash flow to, to put that money down. And, uh, in order to do that, I'm going to, first of all, I may start another funding campaign. Uh, but second of all, I'm going to reach out directly to a couple of people. And curiously, I've had some green coffee, uh, producers, people who actually uh, grow coffee or sell coffee from origin, uh, reach out to me in the last few days, and uh, we're going to uh, speak in the next uh, day or so. 
So that may uh, help us uh, advance things along. Uh, but uh, I'm far from over. Uh, I'm just maybe getting started. But I just, you know, I want to be very clear to everyone. I do need to find a way to get the industry to uh, involve themselves in this and in the funding. And uh, I understand if they don't have the money, they shouldn't do it. But I do think they spend the money when they see direct sales. Uh, and there are some direct sales at CoffeeCon. Uh, and I think that it uh, behooves them to... Uh, also uh, prove their brands. It's a great way to get out there and uh, show uh, what, they, what they can do. Anyway, this is uh, one of my favorite methods of brewing coffee. Uh, Hario is, uh, makes a great siphon. Uh, they've been at it a long time. Do you know Hario is, uh, makes uh, is it all the lights for Toyotas? I, they, they make a lot of uh, car glass items, windshields and, and lights, I believe. Um, anything glass. They are experts in glass. I think Hario uh, means glass. It is a, uh, uh, but they, but they're really, their coffee stuff is across the board, uh, always interesting. Uh, quite different. Uh, they have a lot of products that are very different, uh, but the siphon is uh, one of my favorites. By the way, I use the uh, cloth filter, and uh, that is my personal favorite. Uh, I think the cloth filter does the best job of filtering, uh, meaning that you get the least sediment in there, and yet you get all the flavor. There's no doubt. Uh, be my favorite with a Hario. You know, I'm not uh, suggesting uh, I use uh, prefer cloth in a Chemex. I'm just saying I do in, in this particular method. So I am Coffee Kevin, and uh, I have a special guest that I'm trying to arrange to see if they'll show up on Thursday, and we're going to talk about a special coffee. So we'll see you soon.